Assalamu alaikum students this is your chapter soaring wings of final term class 8 subject english and your teacher's name is ms shumaila iram this chapter is actually about amelia mary earhart amelia mary earhart was the first lady in the history who fly an aeroplane amelia mary earhart was an american aviation pioneer and author earhart was the first female aviator to fly solo across the atlantic ocean she set many other records she wrote books her books were best sellings and uh, she wrote books about her flying experiences and was instrumental in the formation of the 99s what is 99s 99s is actually an organization for female pilots she was born on 24 july 1897 at chisan kansas united states soaring wings the story of amelia earhart actually this is the name of the book soaring wings which was written by her husband after her death born in atchison kansas on 24 july 1897 the daughter of a railroad attorney actually she was the daughter of a railroad attorney that's why earhart spent her childhood in various towns including atchison and kansas city kansas and demons nova at the age of 19 amelia attended obons school near philadelphia pennsylvania Two years later, after visiting her sister Muriel in Toronto, Canada, Amelia felt compelled to leave school. When she was 21 years old, she visited her sister Muriel in Toronto, Canada, and over there she decided to leave the school. Taking a course in Red Cross First Aid, she enlisted as a nurse aide at Spadina Military Hospital in Toronto, Canada, attending to wounded soldiers during World War One. So Amelia worked as a nurse in at Spadina Military Hospital in Toronto. and she tended to uh, wounded soldiers during world war 1 the following year she enrolled as a pre medical student at columbia university in new york shortly thereafter her parents insisted she move to california where they were living later uh, her parents insisted her to come back to california at california she learned to fly Learning to fly in California, Amelia took up aviation as a hobby, taking odd jobs to pay for her flying lesson. Actually, she did many different jobs to pay for uh, to pay a fee of uh, for her flying lessons. In 1922, with the financial help of her sister Muriel and her mother, Amy Otis Earhart, she purchased her first airplane, a Kennard Airstone. With the help of her uh, sister and mother, she purchased uh, her own airplane, and that uh, the name of that airplane was Kennard Airstone. Following her parents' divorce, Amelia moved back east, where she was employed as a social worker in Dunston House in Boston, Massachusetts. After the divorce of her um, parents, Amelia moved back to uh, Boston, Massachusetts. It was there she was selected to be the first female passenger on a transatlantic flight in 1928 by her future husband, the publisher George Palmer Putnam. Actually, George Palmer Putnam, uh, Putnam was not uh, her husband at that time, but he was the first person uh, who uh, gave a chance to uh, female. Amelia Earhart to be the first female passenger on a transatlantic flight in 1928. George saw Amelia's flight as a best-selling story for his publishing house. With pilot Wilmer Stoltz and mechanic Gordon, she flew up from Newfoundland to Wales aboard the trimotor plane Friendship. Her daring and courage were acclaimed around the world. The whole world appreciated her for her courage and daring act. Upon the flight's completion, Amelia wrote the book 20 hours 40 minutes. It was her first book. In 1931, Amelia married George, but continued her aviation career under her maiden name. Maiden name means the name which she uh, used as an un un unmarried girl. Amelia and George formed a successful partnership. George organized Amelia's flight and public appearances and arranged for her to endorse a line of flight luggage and sports clothes. Actually, George helped her. in managing her flights and public appearances she also recommend a line of flight luggage and sports clothes george also published two of uh, her books as he was a publisher that's why the second book uh, the name of the second book of emilia was the fun of it and the third one was the flight the last flight After a series of record making flights Amelia became the first woman to make a solo transatlantic flight in 1932 Actually she had already experienced flying but it was uh, her first solo experience of uh, flight 
That's why she was the first woman to make a solo transatlantic flight in 1932. That same year, she developed flying claws for the 99s. As I, uh, I have already told you that 99s is an organization for female pilots. She started to design claws for that uh, organization. Her first creation was a flying suit with loose trousers, a zipper topper, and big pockets. Four. Advertise it with a two-page photo spread. At Vogue was a, a popular magazine and they advertised it with two-page photo spread. Then she began designing her own line of clothes for the woman who lives actively. She dressed according to the occasion, whether it was flying or an elegant affair. She was most conscious of the image she projected. Several New York garment manufacturers made an exclusive Amelia Earhart line of course which were marked in 30 cities with one exclusive stores in each city such as masses in new york and marshall fields in chicago massey and marshall fields are the big name of manufacturing uh, cloths that's why uh, it was a big achievement of uh, amelia Earhart that they marketed uh, their, uh, her class in 30 cities. Amelia made great strides in opening the new field of aviation in uh, two women. Great strides means she uh, took great uh, big steps. She made a uh, progress in opening the, the new field of aviation to women. In 1935, she became the first person to fly from Hawaii to the American mainland. By doing so, Amelia became not only the first person to fly solo and ever in the Pacific and also the first person to fly solo for that Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Also in 1935, he joined the faculty of Purdue University as a female career consultant. It was the purchase of a Lockheed Electra through Purdue University that enabled her to fulfill her dreams of circumnavigating the globe by air. When she joined the faculty of Purdue University as a female career consultant, that university, Purdue University, purchased an aeroplane for her and that aeroplane name was Lockheed Electra. And that plane enabled her to fulfill her dream of going around the globe by air. In June 1937, Amelia embarked upon the first around the world flight at the equator. Embarked upon, she started the first around the world flight at the equator. It was actually Amelia's dream to fly around the globe. On 2nd July, after completing nearly two thirds of her historic flight over 22,000 miles, she had passed 22,000 miles and she had covered two thirds of her historic flight. Amelia vanished. Vanished means she disappeared along with her navigator Frederick Noonan. They took off from Lake New Guinea, bound for tiny Howland Island. In the vast Pacific Ocean, the distance from Laia to Holland was about equal to a transcontinental flight across the U.S. Actually, they uh, uh, took off from Laia, New Guinea and they had to go to Holland. A great naval air and land search failed to locate Amelia, Noonan or the aircraft. Actually, they used all means to search their bodies, to locate their bodies, but they failed to locate Amelia, Noonan or the aircraft and it was assumed that they were lost at sea. To this day, their fate is the subject of unending, unending speculation because till date, we, did, we didn't know what has happened with the pair. Some theorized if the pair ran out of the fuel looking for Holland Island and had to ditch in the Pacific. Some people thought that they ran out of fuel, that's why they have to ditch in the Pacific Ocean. Others thought they may have crash landed on another small island. Some speculated they were captured by the Japanese accused of espionage. Some people thought that they were caught by Japanese for spying for America and then held as bargaining chips in the event war erupted between the US and Japan. And some people thought that they were used as bargaining chips in the war between US and Japan. In 1939, George authored Amelia's biography entitled Soaring Wings. Her husband George wrote this book and the book's name was Soaring Wings as a tribute to his beloved wife. So this is the story of Amelia Earhart who was the first lady in the world or in the history of aviation who fly in the air uh, through an aeroplane and uh, so
स्टूडेंट दीज आर द मेन पॉइंट ऑफ द चैप्टर दिस इज द स्टोरी ऑफ एमिली आर हार्ट शी वॉज बॉर्न इन एथिसन ऑन ट्वेंटी फोर जुलाई एटीन नाइनटी सेवन शी वॉज फर्स्ट फॉर मैनी नेविएशन शी बिलोंग टू यू एस ए शी क्रॉस पैसेफिक एंड एथलैंडिक हर हजबेंड नेम वॉज जॉर्ज पालमा फुटनेम शी एंडोर्स अ लाइन ऑफ फ्लाइट लगेज इन स्पोर्ट्स क्लॉथ्स She developed clots for 99s in 1937 she took her last flight she vanished after her last flight her body was never found and her biographer's name is Soren Wings I hope students uh, students that you have understood the chapter your written task will be sent to you uh, through whatsapp thank you